All right, good afternoon, everyone. Gary Meek, living in Sacramento, California. And uh, you guys are here as a part of uh, our buyer presentation. And we've talked about all different pieces of the buyer, uh, you know, just the process. And today we're gonna be talking about the pest inspection. I've got uh, Jason with Twin Termite with us today. How you doing, Jason? How's it going? Good, good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good, man. So Jason is one of the managers over at Twin Termite. And Twin has been around for, I don't know, probably 15 to 20 years. Uh, Kyle and his brother, Zach, initially started. They are literally twins. Uh, and Kyle runs the Twin. Yeah. Zach runs another company. And they've been in this their whole entire life. Uh, and I've been using Twin Termite pretty much my entire career. In real estate, they're the uh, most trusted name that I believe of in Sacramento. And so we're going to get into it today. So Jason, my folks have gone through the process. They're in the process. They're learning about the buying process and maybe even from there at the point where we're starting to order inspections. So one of the inspections that we do that's super important is the termite inspection. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the termite inspection as a whole and what it looks like. Yeah. So, um, the, the proper name that no one really talks about, but it's a wood destroying pest and organisms inspection. Um, I've heard, you know, termite inspection. I've heard, uh, um, pest inspection is what they like to call it, but I'm looking for, we're all looking for, uh, all kinds of wood destroying organisms, uh, obviously termites, wood boring beetles, carpenter bees. Uh, and, and the big one is the fungus, the dry rot fungus. Um, I can inspect, you know, a hundred houses. You know, maybe 10 of them have termites, but I would say 80 to 90% of them are going to have the dry rot fungus, um, which, you know, destroys the wood and it, a lot of them have the exterior, um, where we're finding the damage in bathroom floors and stuff. Um, and we're also, we're also looking for conditions that could lead to an infestation. So when our guys are running plumbing or where we're looking for earth to wood contact or big cracks and stuff or stuff like that, where there's water penetration, moisture entry into the house is another thing that we look for. Uh, but as far as the general realm of what we're looking for, we're looking for wood destroying organisms in general. So, okay, cool. So let's talk about okay. that. Who, who is the, uh, I guess the, the company or not the company, I guess the government entity that kind of manages you guys. Why do we have to get a wood destroying pest inspection on properties? What, what is the reason for it? Yeah. So we're, we are governed by the structural pest control board of California. Uh, you know, a lot of our industry has a governing body. I know Department of Real Estate oversees oversees uh, realtors up across the Structural Pest Control Board, and they they have very specific laws um, and outlines on how we're supposed to do and conduct our business. For example, um, there is a very, very clear criteria on what termite reports are supposed to look like. We can't just design our own termite inspection report, and it's our own unique to twin. We actually have to use a government approved big blueprint of what it's supposed to look like. So that's why if you were to look at 10 different termite reports, they're all going to look kind of similar with a front page that has a diagram of the house with letters and numbers signifying, um, where the damage or infestation or problems are in the body of the report, which, which lists what the issues are and what our recommendations are for to fix them. Um, and then, you know, the back page has, um, you know, there's properties off for bids for repair. They'll be there bids for treatment or, or damage or remediation. Um, and it's, it's very strict on what we are supposed to do and very strict on what we're allowed to call. It's very black and white. There's, there's very little gray area in our business. So I am licensed to identify, uh, wood destroying organisms, but say like a home inspector, uh, they're not governed by the state. So, uh, they're only certified. So they, they don't, it's not as black and white as a termite inspection, uh, is. So that's good to know. Awesome. Um, when you're doing an inspection, kind of run us through, um, how long does it take? Uh, are you guys on the inside only, outside only? Tell us a little bit about the report or that inspection itself. Yeah, so our our inspections are, you know, it, it's it's to the visual and accessible areas of the house. So uh, any anything that we can get our eyes on and we can poke at, it's going to be part of the inspection report. Um, and we generally we start on the exterior um, and we do the whole the, we do the whole exterior. It's done from from ground level only, so you know we you know you're not going to see us jumping up on ladders on the second story and stuff like that. It's all ground level. We do the whole interior. The interior consists of you know running plumbing and and looking at drywall and window sills and 
baseboards and checking the ceiling for stains and things like that. Uh, and most of the time we pop our heads up in the attic, look for obvious signs of, you know, roof leakage or drywood termite activity or stuff like that. And then what I think is the most important part of the inspection of the crawl space, if the house is on a raised foundation, you definitely want to get in there and do a thorough uh, examination of the crawl space because that is where homeowners typically don't pay a lot of attention. No one really wants to go down there. And if there's an issue going on, chances are it's going to be down there because no one really knew about it until a termite inspector went down there and checked it out. So uh, they, they generally take about an hour or so. If you got an old house built in 1920 that hasn't been maintained, we'll probably be there for a couple hours. If it's a brand new house, um, then, you know, 20 minutes um, or so. So uh, that's the general time frame uh, that we usually take. So, Gotcha. And I know everybody's price uh, differs, but what's the standard or a common cost or value of a uh, pest inspection or wood destroying pest inspection? Yeah. Um, they run at least with twin, you know, they start at 125 bucks. You got a great big house in that old Eldorado Hills. That's four or 5,000 square feet. You might be looking at two or $225. Okay. But you're going to be in that general range. It's going to be a lot less expensive than a home inspection of which can get up into the four and fives and 600 bucks. Um, that's the general price, 125 to 225 for a regular mid-sized house. Um, we've done big commercial buildings, obviously, or more than that. Yeah. Like that's our general pricing. Yeah, well, most of the time we're dealing with people buying their, you know, their home, their residence. Uh, and you're right, we we go from, you know, 800 square feet to, to multiple thousands. Uh, is there an additional yeah. cost that you guys have to crawl uh, underneath the house? Yeah, it's about 20 bucks more. So, you know, if a house is you know, $125, we're going to be 145 bits to crawl. So it adds a little bit, it doesn't add that much. But $20, $30 is what we usually add to crawl it. Okay. So, very cool. Um Think about it. We're we're talking to the the brand new person, maybe buying their first home, maybe buying you know their second home. What are some of the things that you're most likely going to point out in the inspection? Like you, you've mentioned a few, you know, wood boring beetles and, and different types of termites. I mean, uh, give us like a rundown. I mean, if you're kind of like I said, without looking at a report, give us a rundown of what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of wood destroying bugs and or organisms the biggest one's going to be fungus the fungus okay. damage so I'm, I'm inspecting the outside of the house and you know i'm, I'm checking the eaves i'm seeing you know staining and deterioration of the eaves i poke that piece of wood with my screwdriver and the wood is soft that means that fungus is in it that's most of our inspections right there uh that's most of our 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 work our business is in that that fungus repair and calling it out on the report so if it's a new home buyer my thought process is, you know, you're not going to really be dealing with termites all that much as much as you're going to be dealing with, dealing with this fungus that's as a, a result of not keeping your house painted, not keeping your house sealed, uh, which was what a lot of homeowners don't do as much based on my experience. We don't inspect a ton of houses that were just painted or if they were painted, it's because they're getting ready to sell it. Uh, yeah. So when, when I'm doing my inspection and, and going over it with buyers, my the biggest thing I've talked with them about is, is fungus damage, whether it be siding or trim or eaves and stuff. Of course, if there's termites, you know, we're going to run, we're going to give the rundown of the treatments. But when it comes to the costs of, of our reports and the, what we're recommending, standard termite treatments for, let's say, subterranean termites was, with, you know, if, if I were to do 10, find 10 houses that have termites, nine of them are going to have subterranean termites and, and one's going to have drywood termites, which is what we intend for. Uh, the subterranean termite treatments usually run between a thousand and two thousand dollars, but if a if a house uh, that hasn't been really maintained and has a fair amount of dry damage, you know that 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 those costs are going to be five ten thousand plus for those kind of repairs. So the to treat for termites is not that expensive in the whole grand scheme of the repair and maintenance on your house, and that's a I think I think a lot of buyers don't understand that because I I've had. I've had buyers that, you know, I, I'd say, Hey, you know, you got, you know, a fair amount of dry rot damage here. And I did see termites in the crawl space and they'd freak out because they got termites. Well, the termites, they haven't really doing it, done any damage. And the, the tree farm on that house, I think was like 1200 bucks. And it, it, so, but then I gave them a bid for like, like $15,000 on all this dry rot repair. They didn't even bad. I didn't care about that. So I just thought it was interesting, but the termites are known as the scary bugs, but it's really this fungus dry rot damage as a, as a result of not maintaining your house properly that is the big culprit behind 
the issues that we see with houses. So that's an interesting. I, I think buyers should know the termites aren't generally that big of a deal. They usually can be treated. Um, it's the dryer repairs that can get costly. So, yeah, it's interesting. We're talking about pricing here. And when you talk about a home inspection, you know, the home inspector is not allowed, at least in California, to really quote uh, cost for repairs or to do the repairs where you guys actually are yeah. I mean, when we get a pest report wood string organisms report it has a cost associated with it so tell us why you guys can bid out repairs where a home inspector maybe can no that's a great question so home inspectors are looking at all the components of the house they're testing the major components of the house so let's say a house wasn't maintained from a component standpoint a home inspector could go in and find that the oven's not working and find that the ac has issues that the water heater duct work electrical i can go right on down the line and then yeah. it makes repairs there you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars and that might be exaggerated but we're talking about a big number here yeah uh which is why i can see why the state of california doesn't allow you know them to bid out um, for us in the termite world, because we're governed by the the state, what the state is allowing us to do is they're allowing us to remediate the presence of wood destroying organisms. Okay. So, um, and, and remediate the damage that these wood destroying organisms have caused. Um, and that's the, that is the license and the, and, and the standpoint. We're not a construction company. We can't just go in and remodel a bathroom simply because somebody uh, asked us to uh, but we can come in and remediate damage, which is where our license allows us to do. So they're, 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 they're I've heard of, uh, it's never been, been with two, but I've heard horror stories of companies, you know, going in and, and recommending, uh, some type of remodel where there's no, there's no, there's no bugs, there's no fungus, and then getting dinged for that. Cause that's not part of what we're allowed to do. So, uh, as far as why we're allowed to call it, it's the, we re we're allowed to remediate the, the problems on the house as a result of wood destroying the organism. So that's the best way I can describe it. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. It's a great example. Great, uh, you know, determination for us. Like I said, mm -hmm. as an agent, when I'm out, you know, looking at the, uh, reports, when I meet with my clients at the property, we're, you know, walking around the property, the home inspector kind of gives us an idea and it's really nice to have a dollar figure associated with that because then we can either yeah. have an understanding of, you know, these are things that if you don't address them now, later on, they're going to, you know, continue to compound whether we ask for mm -hmm. credit, we ask the seller to do it. And then of course we always ask a licensed person to do it. So a lot of times we'll say, Hey, we just want the pet right. company to, to take care of it. We know what the dollar figure is, uh, and it helps us with our negotiations. Right. And, and what I like to be open about how we submit our bids, especially with buyers is it's really important that that you the agent um go over the report with the buyer um and and understand our re recommendation because a lot of times let's say for example i call dry rot, dry rot damage to uh to some siding you know when there's damage to the siding and my bid is to repair the siding well what we can only bid on this is real super important that i'd like them to understand too is we can only bid on what we can see right i'm not allowed to bid on what i think could be behind the siding and what happens is we pull the siding off and sure enough, there's something going on that we expose a termite infestation or, or there's dry rot damage to the framing. We can now bid on it because now we expect it and see it. And, uh, when there's credits given or you're trying to negotiate, sometimes I feel like that's not factored in and, and obviously that can hurt the, the buyer, the new homeowner, because now there's this extra cost they weren't aware of because it was hidden and nobody knew about it because you can open it up. So I like to be open about if I, if I make a recommendation, I like to open it up. We could find more stuff behind that wall after we open it up. Uh, I think it's important for all parties to know that. So, yeah, no, I agree with that. Especially in in local Sacramento, we have a lot of T one eleven siding houses built in eighties and nineties that those haven't been, like you said, upkept. And so you get into that, and yeah. behind the T one eleven, there's you know rotten out uh, two by fours and bracing and yeah. framework and things like that. Now there's yeah. Yeah, there's two parts that we talk about. We talk about section one and section two. Can you help describe that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So our our reports are broken up into four four different areas. First area is called section one that you're talking about. Section one items are the presence of wood store harvest. There's something alive, there's some bug, there's some organism that's eating, damaging the house. So that would be a section one item. And for our report to 
termites, it's subterranean termites, it's drywood termites, it's fungus, and then this other category, which which encompasses carpenter ants, carpenter bees, woodworm beetles, that kind of thing. So that's section one. And section one is also damage that these wood destroying organisms have caused. Um, section two items are conditions that um, are conducive. So it's a condition that could lead to a section one. It could lead to an infestation if left un unfixed. Um, so example examples of that would be um, a leakage, uh, earth to wood contacts. Let's say that T111 side you're talking about, they, they built it and then uh, soil has drifted and is now in contact with it. That's an easy freeway for a subterranean termite which nests in the soil to get into the house. Uh, roof leaks, uh, big cracks in the stucco, stuff like that. That's all section two stuff. I like to point out that if this leak has caused dry rot damage, it has now become a section one item. So that's important for people to know. Um, uh, you know, or if, or if that earth wood contact has caused a termite infestation, that is now a section one item along with termites. But the, the next section on the report is a further inspection. These are areas of the house that we can't see. As, as a termite company, we are required to disclose the areas of the house that we can inspect. Most of these areas, it's just it's not practical. You know, I'm not gonna recommend ripping the whole kitchen out so I can see the framing behind it, or I'm not gonna recommend ripping all, all of the ductwork out of the sub area so that you can uh, see better. It's just not practical. But there are areas of the house where they're inaccessible and it's practical to make accessible. We're going to put that in this further inspection category, this third category. Okay. Great examples of a inaccessible area are, let's say, a crawl space is inaccessible because the hatch is screwed shut or bolted shut mm -hmm. or they have a big dresser on top of it or whatever. It's practical to take for the owner or us or whoever to open it up to get in down there. Or if there's a bunch of storage in the garage, you know, we see a lot of termite infestations in garages. It's it's practical for the owner to remove the storage or pull it back so we can see it better. I just had one in Woodland last week where uh, one of the rooms was uh, locked. There's a tenant situation. They locked their bedroom. We get in it, but it's practical for them to unlock it so we can get in there. So that section is, is areas that we need practical to make accessible, but we couldn't get to it. And then the, the last part of the report is the uh, informational part. So our ports consist of, you know, the fr first couple of pages are boilerplate type stuff, disclaimer right type stuff. But this section of the report or the, the notes or informational part of the report talk about just information that we see. For example, um, I'll put a note in there that talks about, you know, if we see additional damage, we'll let you know. Um, there's a note in there that says, you know, we can't see or we can't inspect above 10 feet. We just do a visual inspection. Um, I'll make notes, you know, there was weathering to this portion of the house, but there were no issues there it's just whether it's just it's an informational part of the report that provides more information above and beyond just the findings part of it um so those are the four base parts of our report cool very good and then real quick just want to interject for every just so you guys understand section one is the probably the highest level of of damage that there's already currently happened and if you are getting va financing mm -hmm. section one is required to be repaired in order for the veterans um loan so that is something that uh is super important um for you guys that are getting va loans to understand we appreciate your service and you guys get a specialty loan but the government backs that so they specifically want section one cleared jay said any last we do, uh, we do a ton of uh, those yeah yeah any last minute things uh, so I, was, I was just gonna say sorry to cut you off there yeah yeah you're good uh yes Sorry to kind of get up. I, I was going to say we do a lot of uh, inspection where the VA is involved, and uh, they are they're strict, but they're strict because of, of their their great industry they provide. But in most cases, they require uh, all the section one, uh, section two, and further inspections to be done. I know it differs from uh, from uh, company to company, uh, but uh, we do a ton of those, and and um, we're great. So awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you being here. Um... And, uh, and sharing with us and helping my buyers and any buyers out there that are looking to buy to understand what a termite inspection is and how it's important to them and what it could do to help them and protect them when they're buying their house. No, I, I appreciate you having me on. And if any of your clients ever have any questions about termite in general and you need to point them to a resource, you're, you can reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to talk with, uh, with your clients and help ease their mind if they're having any issues with not only our but let's say they have their own company to use and, and they see the report and they're 
have questions and they want someone else to reach out to, I'm always here uh, if, you, if you need anything. Cool. Very good, man. Well, like I said, I appreciate you being here and uh, sharing with us today. For you guys, if you're interested to learn more about Termite Reports, if you guys would like to reach out to Twin, I'm going to go ahead and put the main number for Twin uh, down in the uh, information category, as well as their website address, so you could reach out and um, get an inspection. If you like, if you want to talk to somebody, and then uh, of course, if you guys are working with me as a buyer, most likely Twin is going to be called. Uh, and I know you guys have a ton of inspectors there. It's not always going to be you. Um, how many staff do you guys have there doing your termite reports? We've got um, three amazing uh, ladies here that um, that take in proof, submit, and process our reports. You get an inspection done through Twin. Um, they receive the report, process, and get it out to you, your clients, in 24 hours. Uh, we've got uh, seven awesome termite inspectors that are thorough, friendly. Um, we are continuing to look for a couple more inspectors as we get into the busy season. So uh definitely if you're interested in getting into our industry always reach out we definitely like to train uh, great people and uh and yeah we're here to do a great job for you and your clients so uh, definitely come to us with questions of business cool man once again buddy i appreciate you so much thanks for everything and have yourself a great day take care everyone awesome thanks gary thank you I'm with it.